Well, good morning. I know that many of you join us online, but today St. Paul's going to be at the garden and we're going to be working up there and I can't keep a regular signal out there. So I'm recording just a little something for those of you who join us online so that you too can worship kind of outside on this third Sunday after Pentecost. No, we are not at the garden. We're at my house and I'm being beat down upon the sun because of course I didn't find any shade. So I invite you to join me for just a really quick devotional and service this morning. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as I pray, pray the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I'll just choose one of our readings. The first one is from 1 Kings 19. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abala Mahola, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've got to admit, this is one of the weirdest call stories in the Bible. Not that the rest of them are all that normal. I mean, think of Isaiah. He sees himself in the throne room of God. And this angel comes and touches his mouth with a hot coal. And God says, now what I've purified, don't let it call any profane. And, and Isaiah goes out and prophesies. And then there's young Samuel, who has been living in the temple. And he starts hearing things at night. And it ends up being God calling him. And then, you know, you got Peter and James and John. And they're out fishing. And Jesus goes, and they follow him. So... Call stories are really interesting because what's happening here is Elijah takes off his mantle or the thing he's wearing around him that signifies he's a prophet of God and puts it on Elisha. It'd be kind of like if I came to your house and I just kind of tooled along and I took off my stole and gave you my keys, put it around you, hand it to you and go, hi, you're now the pastor of St. Paul. I mean, how would that feel? Really bizarre. But that's what's happening here because God has told Elijah it's time for a new person to come into the life of God's people. Now, Elisha obviously has a lot going on. He's with 12 yoke of oxen. That's a lot of oxen, even back in that day. So he's, if he follows Elijah, he has to give up a lot to do that. He has obvious land, money, influence, payroll, because if he's with the 12, someone's gotta be with the other 11. And so he ran after, so then he has to decide what he's going to do. And after having that just simple word of Elijah saying, okay, he runs back, he slaughters his oxen, he feeds everybody, and he follows Elijah. Hmm. Talk about going all in. Question for you to think about this day. And I invite you to talk with it with your family or friends that you're around is how do you pass on not just your faith, but what I call your position, whether that's in your family or your work or community, or yes, even in your church. How do you hear God 
asking you to put your mantle, because we all have position in some way or another, on that next person. And what is your responsibility to help them walk? I remember when I was headed back to seminary the second time, long story if you haven't heard it, I owned a condo in Denver. And I had had a friend stay at it while I went to Minnesota for one year of seminary because back then you couldn't do things online. And my intention was to come back and do internship back in Denver, stay in my condo, and then be available for call once I finished up just a couple more classes. Well, while I was tooling around Minnesota on, inter on my that year and working in a couple parishes, I had to make a decision. What was I going to do with that condo? It was the first place I ever owned. And I bought it when I made like less than a thousand dollars a month. So it was like my everything. And I said to someone, well, I think we were going to a pastor's meeting out of town. And I said, yeah, I have to decide what to do with it because I've got to make a decision about internship. But I really don't want to sell my condo. Because what if this doesn't work out? What if the committees, because we go through committees to be ordained, says, no, I need some place to go back to. And one of the pastors in our group, after hearing my story, and he knew me for a while, this was like six, eight months in internship, or into that year, said, maybe God's calling you to let go and trust that God's leading you to where you need to go. I didn't like that answer. But I, I kind of slept with it and laid with it. And about a month later, I sold my condo. And I went on internship in a place I could have never even imagined to carry Ohio. I started on a road of it, rural ministry, which is where I've spent my 23 years of ministry. All because I let go of my condo. Where is God asking you? What is God asking you to let go of? And to put your mantle on the next person so that you both can go where God is leading. Let's pray. Holy and precious God, thank you for others in our lives. Thank you for calling us in ways we sometimes recognize and sometimes we don't. Help us to let go when we need to and help us to hold on when we need to. Amen. I invite you to sing with me. I know you don't have the words because I don't have a way to do that. The song we'll sing, it's called Pass It On. It only takes a spark to get a fire going And soon all those around can warm up in its glowing That's how it is with God's love Once you've experienced it you spread that love to everyone you want to pass it on i wish for you my friend this happiness that i found you can depend on god it matters not where you're bound I'll shout it from the mountain top. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. I'll shout it from the mountain top. Praise God. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. And may God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks for joining me.